You'll see that today we are using the multiplicative inverse uh, to solve one-step equations. Yesterday we were doing additive inverses. So obviously if we're doing the multiplicative inverses, today we should be dealing with what operations mostly? Multiplication. Multiplication. Yesterday we were dealing with addition. So what we had to do yesterday is when we saw subtractions, we had to turn them into addition. Today when we're looking at division, we're not quite going to think about them differently. We're going to talk about how we want to think about them um, as multiplicative inverses, but how it's a little bit different, and we're going to change that a little bit. All right? So what is the inverse operation for multiplication? Marquita. Division. I'm okay with this. This is probably not the most general way of thinking about this. The most general way of thinking about it would be by looking at the next one. What is the inverse operation of multiplying a fraction? Tufa. Multiplying the reciprocal. Multiplying the reciprocal. Now, when we're talking about the multiplicative inverse, the most general way of stating the multiplicative inverse operation is to say multiply the reciprocal. Let's talk about why that works. Even if we have a whole number, like 5 times x, if I think about 5 times x and I think about it as a fraction, 5 over 1, and I multiply by its reciprocal, 1 over 5, and I think about this as one long fraction, 1 times 5 times x is 5x over 5 times 1 is 5. What does it really look like I did there? When I multiplied by the reciprocal of 5, what did it look like I really did when we look at the second way that we write that? Adolfo. What? Looks like I divided. So we can see that multiplying by the reciprocal of a whole number is the same thing as dividing by that whole number. So the general way to talk about the multiplicative inverse is to say multiplying by its reciprocal. I'm okay, as long as we're talking about whole numbers, for you to tell me that the multiplicative inverse is division. However, if we're talking about our map testing and really pushing ourselves to grow multiple grade levels like we did at the beginning of the year, you need to understand this. Understand that multiplying by the reciprocal of a whole number is the same thing as dividing by that whole number. And this is a quick reason as to why. Now, what is the inverse of division? Matthew, multiplication. So the explanation for this as a multiplicative inverse is pretty much the opposite explanation of the previous statement. So we have a division, x over 5. I can break that division out into basically this is equal to 1 over 5 times x over 1. And if I wanted to do multiply by the reciprocal now of this 1 over 5, I'd be multiplying by, if I was multiplying by the reciprocal of this 1 over 5, I'd be multiplying by, if I wanted to multiply by this reciprocal of 1 over 5, I'd want to multiply by, Amanda? 5 over 1, so multiplying by 5. So we can see here that this inverse operation that we're doing is really just a multiplication of the reciprocal. Either way. So we can see that idea where when we're always talking about divisions or multiplications, we're always multiplying by the reciprocal. It just looks a little bit different and there are things that you guys are more familiar with. So that's why we talk about divisions. Or that's why we talk about inverses of divisions being multiplication. So let's look at some examples here. We have 2.5x equals 15. Now we said this is a multiplication. 
This is the multiplication of a non-fraction. So our inverse operation that we've decided that we're going to use because it's easier and you're more familiar with it, the inverse operation we need to do is what? I have a multiplication, something times x. That's the operation that has been done to x. What is the inverse operation that I need to do here? Denzel? Divide. Divide. Now we said that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, just so we understand that. And our question is, why does this work? Why is this the inverse operation? Brandon? Okay, so I hear two things here. He's saying the dividing by 2.5 is getting it alone, and he's saying that the reason why we did it to both sides is because that's basically the property of equality. Anything we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. Now, my question to clarify what Brandon was saying is, why does dividing 2.5 by 2.5 here get the x alone? This is a key piece of understanding that we absolutely have to have. Psalm. Because if you divide something by itself, then you get one. All right, so this is the work that I want you to show to prove to me that you understand this particular concept. When we were doing with the additions, we put an arrow through it and we put a zero. When we're doing a division, something divided by itself is one. Now, we have one times x. What property can we use to determine 1 times x? Joshua. Identity? Yeah, it's the multiplicative identity, 1 times x. And that's why we get, really, this is 1 times x, but we know 1 times x is just one. x. So two different ways you can show your work here. Number one, you can write it the way that I've written it, written it with the arrow and the 1. Or you can write a step in between that says you know that this is the same thing as 1 times x is equal to 15 over 2.5. Either way, doesn't really matter to me, but either way you have to show me some way, somehow, that you understand that this inverse operation is leading us to this multiplication of 1 and the identity property. All right? 15 divided by 2.5. That's the only work we have left to do since we've got this x all alone on the left-hand side. And once we do that work, I'm not going to make us spend the time to do the division. We should get 6. All right. So over on the opposite side, I've taken the training wheels off. I've said you're going to have to do this all on your own without the framework here. I have 0.5x is equal to negative 15. So I have something has been multiplied times x. So thinking about the way we thought about it yesterday, anytime we want to go back and find an unknown, we have to retrace our steps and do the opposite. What's the opposite of multiplying by 0.5? Jefferson. Dividing by 0.5. So I divide both sides by 0.5. Notice I have not made you rewrite this right here. How generous of me. This is appropriate work that will lead you to success in algebra next year. Um, you don't have to rewrite this particular one to be successful. However, you do need to show me that you recognize that 0.5 divided by 0.5 is indeed 1. You can do so by putting the arrow through, showing me that you know that multiplies to 1, and that 1 times x is just x. Over on the right hand side of the equation, we have the negative 15 divided by 0.5. First thing I recognize, bad date. I'm going to throw my negative down there. I'm going to do 15 divided by 0.5, and what are we going to get? Oh, you want me to answer that? Yes. It's a 3. Negative 3. Negative point three. No, it's a 3. Oh. I don't know. 
Okay. So that's easy. This is something that makes a lot of sense to us based on the things that we already know. This is not a big deal to us. Multi doing multiplications or inverses of multiplications, that's really simple to us because it's something we've done before. Now, looking at this next problem, we want to use the same concept here. We have b divided by 3 is equal to 15. Now, remember, we want to do the opposite of, our, of what has ever happened to our unknown. We have b divided by 3. What did we say was the inverse operation for division? Joshua. Multiplication. So we're dividing by 3, so in this case, we're going to multiply by 3. You notice I'm writing this multiplication as a fraction. 3 over 1. Remember, that's just the same thing as this 1 over 3 times b and 3 over 1. What a lot of people want to do when they do this problem is they want to go ahead and put a b down here. All right? They want to go ahead and put a b down here because they remember, oh, I want to multiply by a reciprocal of a fraction. And this looks a lot like a fraction. What would happen mathematically if we multiplied 3 over b times b over 3? Adolfo? It would not equal 0. It would equal 1 because the b's would cancel out with the b's and the 3's would cancel out with the 3's. Is that what we wanted? Yes. Did we want the b's to cancel out? No, we don't want the B's to cancel out. We want the B to be alone. Okay, so we don't want that B to be down there. The only thing we want to cancel out is that 3 that's on the bottom. So I multiply by 3 over here on the, right hand, or on the left hand side. And if I do it on the left hand side, I also have to do it on the right hand side. So we have a 3 over 3, which Marquita is recognizing this 3 over 3 really just cancels out to a multiplication of 1. 1 times b, that gives us the b on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have a simple multiplication of 3 times 15, which is 45. Triana. So... You'll see that we had a b divided by 3. That was our original problem. We said the inverse operation of division was multiplication. So instead of dividing by 3, we added a multiplication of 3 to both sides. When we did that multiplication of 3, that left us with this 3 and 3 that we could cancel out to all 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1, right? We did that to the other side. We also did the same multiplication of 3 to the other side. On the other side, nothing canceled out. It just multiplied 3 times 15. Let's see another example. R divided by 3.2 is equal to negative 5. Now, we need to do our inverse operation. We see a division here. Our inverse operation for division is what? Multiplication. Multiplication. So it divided by 3.2, so the inverse operation is to multiply by 3.2. So I'm going to multiply over here by 3.2. When I think about this as a fraction, I can put it over 1. I don't need to put it over 1, but that, help, that may help some of you remind yourselves that that causes that cancellation of top and bottom. Okay. So for some of you, it just depends on which way you like to see it. Sometimes you're going to want to put the, some of you want to put the blank space under there. Some of you want to put the one under there. Is there any way I would ever want to put an R down here? No. No, because if I put an R there, what happens? Imani. The R will cancel out with the R, and we'd end up moving, if we did the same thing to the other side, we'd end up with 3.2 over r, so our r would have moved to the other side, which would have been really bad. Okay, we don't want that. Yes? How would it move to the other side? So if, if we had multiplied oops, one side by 3.2 over r, we would have to do the same thing to the other side because of the property of equality. And we don't want to do that. All right? So I have the 3.2 over 1 or 3.2, whichever way you want to look at it. 
whichever way you want to look at it, doesn't really matter. If you just want to look at this as 3.2 times 5, that's totally fine. If you want to think about it as fractions, that's totally fine as well. All right, so on the left-hand side, I had this multiplication that ended up as a 1. So I had 1 times r, which is just r, is equal to negative 5 times 3.2. First thing I recognize, bad date. Second thing I recognize, 5 times 3.2. I got one decimal place, so I need one decimal place in my answer. 0, carry the 1. One decimal place over actually comes out to be exactly 16. And checking back, bad date, good to go. Questions? All right. That's a little bit more confusing, which was clear because you asked a few questions, but I think you've got yourselves clarified here. Now we move on to the one that I think is the least intuitive to you all. We have 2 thirds times b is equal to negative 6. Interestingly enough, I think you guys will have less trouble with this than the previous problem. What, is the, did we, what did we write down and say was the inverse operation of multiplying a fraction? No. Oh, no, 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 the, um, uh, the reciprocal. Yeah, multiplying by the reciprocal. So the first thing you said was dividing a fraction, which is fine because when we divide a fraction, what do we really do? We multiply by the reciprocal. So it's the same thing. So I want to multiply by the reciprocal here. So I've got two-thirds. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to multiply by three over two. I'm going to do that to both sides. Now, how does this get our b alone? What did this multiplying by 3 over 2 do to get our b alone? Jefferson. It, um, it cancels the 3 and 3 and 3. Yeah. Our 3's cancel out to a 1, and our 2's cancel out to a 1. So we get 1 times 1 times b is just 1b, or b. All right? Gets our b all canceled out, all alone, all that stuff that's hanging out with him, gone. Sandra. So the B is over here. Nothing has canceled the B out. The only way we could cancel out the B would be with another B. And we didn't add any multiplications of Bs here. All right. On the opposite side, I have 3 over 2 times negative 6. I'm going to put the over 1 there just to make me think about this as top times top, bottom times bottom. What is it that I can do here before I do this multiplication that might be somewhat helpful? Itzy? Factor? Yeah, do some factoring. So I see that this is going to be 3 times 2. So that cancels out a 2 with a 2. Got nothing but 1s left on the bottom. So I know this is going to be a whole number. I have 3 times 3, which is 9. Itzy? It's supposed to be a negative. Good eye. So sometimes when we go through this factoring, we lose track of our good dates and our bad dates. We recognize here this was a positive number multiplied times a negative number originally, so this was a bad date. I think this comes more intuitively to you guys than actually the division. Sandra. If things cancel out in top and bottom, they have to be top and bottom, then they can cancel out. If we don't have anything that can cancel out, then we can't cancel anything out on the right-hand side. We just have to multiply. Top times top, bottom times bottom. All right. One more example over here. We have negative 5 thirds R times negative 5. We have negative 5 thirds times R is equal to negative 5. So we've multiplied our unknown times a fraction, a negative fraction. This is the one piece that you have to be really, really careful of that I think with the fractions some of you are going to make mistakes on or with any of these multiplications. I've multiplied negative 5 thirds times r. Negative 5 thirds times r. What's my inverse operation here? Solve. Oh, so multiply the reciprocal 
multiply by the reciprocal. So our reciprocal here is going to be flipping this over, multiplying by 3 over 5. Now, we have to think about that negative very carefully. If I multiply a positive times a negative over here, it would be a negative, which would leave me with negative r. Do I want negative r? Yes. How can I make that not be a negative r? What can I do to fix that problem? Jefferson. Yeah, make this a good date by turning the 3 over 5 into a negative. So that makes a good date. That means that I'm multiplying the other side by negative 3 fifths. So let's make sure this all cancels out. First thing we recognize, on the left-hand side, that's a good date. That's why we get that cancel out. We see our fives cancel out with our fives. Our threes cancel out with our threes. One times one times, I kind of hid my R over there. One times one times R is just R. Now, if I multiplied one side by negative 3 fifths, I have to multiply the other side by negative 3 fifths. So I've got this going on over here. We'll get to Psalm's question in just a second. We have, over here in this multiplication, we have some nice things that can cancel out here. A 5 can cancel out with a 5, leaving us with just the negative 3 times a negative. So over on the right-hand side, we also have a good date. Positive 3. Okay, so this is where it gets really tricky. It has nothing to do with you understanding inverse operations here and everything to do with you paying attention to your sign rule. Question from Song. How come when you were like, uh, to avoid it being negative, we can just change this to a negative? Like, how can you just change it like because you want it? So this is our inverse operation. We can do whatever inverse operation we want. If we wanted to take this problem and we wanted our inverse operation to be multiplied by 1,223 and multiply both sides by 1,223, we could totally do that. It wouldn't be very useful because it wouldn't make things cancel out, but we can do that. So we can do whatever inverse operation we want. But it's not the opposite because it's negative. So we're thinking about the reciprocal. And so if we think about this negative 5 thirds as negative 5 over 3, we can think about our reciprocal as flipping that over, being 3 over negative 5. Uh, okay. Triana. So what we have over here is we couldn't completely cancel out this 5 with this negative 5. So we, this was a negative 5 and this was a positive 5. So what this really was is just looking at the original problem, it was a negative 5 times a negative 3 fifths, which is a good date, right? Yep. Looking at the original that we wrote down, it was negative 5 times negative 3 fifths. Good date. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. So you just have to be super careful paying attention to those sign rules as you go. All right, Joshua, one last question. Put a one over the negative five. So this is a negative five. Remember the whole number negative five is negative five over one. Not the other way around. Yeah. Triana. Uh, uh, Looking at these last two review problems, just double checking that we make sure that we remember the inverse of addition is adding the opposite. So over here we had a subtraction that we leave change switched to addition of a negative, so we added a positive to both sides. Like signs add. 
Over here we added a positive to both sides, but we got opposite signs subtract. So we got 1.6, take the sign of the larger number, negative 1.6. Any questions about that? All right, before we move on with our classwork today, we need to go ahead and write down our key points. Triana. Marquita, help her out. So what I hear her saying is that inverse multiplications should never include a variable. And based on the problems that we're doing, that's true. We're actually going to run into some problems later on in the year where we're actually going to want to move the variable. But for these problems and the way that we're looking at problems now, you're never going to want to do that. Never. Triana. I have a question. Yes. There, I mean, there are instances, and actually we'll get to those later in the year, where we're going to be adding variables, and the purpose of that is going to be to move them to the other side. But in these problems that we're doing today, we want to get the variable alone, so there's no reason to be trying to move anything to any variables to the other side. Triana, did you say you had another key point? Mm -hmm. uh, multiply with reciprocal. So I'm going to take what you're saying there and kind of go to what you said earlier. Knowing what these inverse operations are, these three inverse operations, is really important. Knowing that for division, for multiplication, we're using division. For multiplying a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. And for multiplication, and for the division, we're going to do the multiplication. And I'm going to add the third key point in here is just be really careful. With good day, bad day. With sign rules. So good date, bad date, if it's addition, like signs add, different signs subtract, that's going to be a big difference maker for you guys, all right?